Okay, so uh, firstly, uh, I would like to say a huge welcome to everybody. Um, I hope you can hear us all and see us all fairly clearly. Um, my name is John Walsh and I'm Assistant Head of School at TU Dublin School of Creative Arts. If I get a bit distracted, uh, it's because I'm letting people in from the lobby and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I will just introduce some people while we get started. Um, I'm joined here by several of my colleagues from the school, by Kieran Corcoran, who's the Head of School, by uh, Tim Kovar, who is from the School of Media, he's from Photography, uh, from Kerry, Kerry Meegan, uh, with Kerry Meegan is joining us, who's, she's from Visual Merchandising, Ronan McRae from Fine Art, Neville Knott from Interior Design, uh, Nora Duggan, who is from, uh, looks after multiple of our courses actually as well, Mick O'Hara um, is from Fine Art, Peter McCann is from Interior Design and he's a furniture designer, and Gareth O'Neill is our colleague from Admissions. So, um, firstly, you're really, really welcome here and we'd like to say a big thank you for joining us. We're very happy to have you. Um, we would love to be having you on campus and hopefully we will be able to have you on campus very, very soon. So normally uh, we, we would have these portfolio sessions and you get to see our studios and all of that. All of that. Um, whilst uh, it's a little bit of a pity not to be doing that, we do hope you'll be able to vis visit, visit us very soon. And in fact, we've had several visits from schools and from post leaving cert courses and if any of you are interested or uh, you want to make contact or you want to ask your um, lecturer or teacher you should please do and uh, you know get in contact with us and we'd be delighted to show you around uh, with uh, yeah you, you know your colleagues from your your program and that or if you're just generally interested in, in the programs you can contact us anytime and i'll put up some contact details later on okay so Look, what, what we're going to do is I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about our school um, and then we're going to get into some questions and answers and I'm going to go work through uh, the whole portfolio submission process. And we've got a sort of a frequently asked questions uh, that hopefully will answer a lot of questions you have already. Uh, but if they don't, if we don't, uh, feel free to ask any questions about port port portfolio sub submission. But also at the end, if you have any uh, questions about the programmes, we are more than happy to, to to answer them. So what we might do is, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I shall share my screen here and let me just make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Uh, so you are very welcome uh, to our webinar on portfolio submission at TU Dublin School of Creative Arts. Most of you probably do know, or I hope you do know where we are. We're based in TU Dublin Grange Gorman. Uh, it's very close to the centre of town. We're about 15 minutes walk from O'Connell Street. Uh, so very central, just north of Smithfield. And we've got a, a new campus. For those of you who uh, mightn't be familiar with it, we used to be uh, DIT and we've merged with the Institute of Technology Blanches Sound and with TALA as well to become TU Dublin, uh, Ireland's first technological university. Um, and we are, in, in conjunction that most of our uh, uh, campuses, which were dotted around the city, have all moved to uh, Grange Gorman. So uh, there's a huge amount of really exciting buildings being built, and I'll show you some pictures and tell you a little bit about that later. Uh, we have moved from, uh, originally from Mountjoy Square and Portland Row to our new home, which is in the East Quad. And it's a really, really exciting time for us. Despite COVID even, we have managed to get into our new building and it's a really, really great place for us to be. It's our new home. We've been in a bit of a transition phase for a number of years, um, but it's really very exciting. We are joined in, this, in, the, in the East Quad by our colleagues from uh, the School of Media, the Conservatoire of Music and Drama and from Social Sciences. So really, it's a it's a very exciting, creative hub uh, and an amazing place to be. We've got exceptional art studios right on the top floor and design studios throughout the building. I'm just flicking through some of the images. Um, sorry, never... John. sorry, John, we're not seeing your screen now. Oh, OK. OK, 
So we're based just north of Smithfield, as I said, right in the center of the city. Um, our building, our new building is the East Quad, uh, which is a purpose-built facility. We're joined there by our colleagues from the School of Media, the Conservatory of Music and Drama and, um, from, and, and Social Science. So it's a, a really amazing creative hub that combines everything from music to film and broadcasting to uh, game design to our own programs, which I'll tell you a little bit about in a minute. Um, these are just a couple of images of our art studios and uh, which run throughout the building from top to bottom on different floors. Uh, this is our Viscom studio. This is uh, our visual merchandising studio at an event a couple of weeks ago where they turned uh, their, their studio into effectively a, a, re a retail shop. Um, we've got extensive facilities in terms of a 3D workshop. Um, we have the ability for students to be able to make, make all sorts of things. So our fine artists use it, our product designers use it, our visual merchandising students use it, FizCom students, everyone uses it. Our interior designers and furniture designers use it to make and prototype things. We've also got a new building, which is our uh, a new print studio, which is a beautiful building to do screen printing, etching and all that sort of stuff. Also in the East Quad, there are lots of other amazing facilities like a 400 seater concert hall. And there is also black box theater, uh, film studios, uh, or, sorry, TV studios, and also all sorts of broadcasting equipment. And uh, my colleagues can uh, correct me from the School of Media if I miss out on anything. Uh, the campus isn't all just about the East Quad where we're based. There are multiple other beautiful buildings that are popping up around the campus, and it's a really great and exciting place to be. Our programs, uh, we've got programs in visual communication, which is basically like graphic design, uh, fine art, which is very much contemporary fine art, visual merchandising and display design, uh, that's like retail design, interior design, uh, which you'll be familiar with, was very much commercial interior design, uh, not just domestic. Uh, uh, there's a lot of em emphasis on commercial retail, uh, workplace, uh, hospitality, all of that sort of stuff, and creative industries and visual culture. Uh, so the, this is a program which doesn't actually require portfolios, but uh, sorry, um, excuse my spelling there as well. Um, but the, the, this is a program where you might go into the, cu the cultural sector as a cultural manager. And we also shared a product design program with our colleagues in the School of Mechanical and Design Engineering. Uh, and we have postgraduate programs, MAs, and we go right up to PhD level. So if you come and join us, you uh, will actually, we'd, we'd like to have you for a very long time, right up until you uh, graduate with your PhD. Um, for staying in contact with us, there are a couple of things you can do, and we would really like you to check out our website. Uh, so if you go to tudublin.ie, and if you go to explore, it's a little bit, uh, you'll have to kind of find your way into the school, but you we're the, the TU Dublin School of Creative Arts, so you'll find us there. And also you can find us on Facebook where we upload any events that we're having. And that's TU Dublin School of Creative Arts, just facebook.com forward slash TU Dublin School of Creative Arts. Um, one thing, and actually what I will do now is uh, I'm just going to go briefly to the website. So if you're trying to find us, um, any events that we have, and this is actually really important for We'll say any portfolio related events or for our graduate exhibition you just go to tu dublin you go to explore schools and disciplines where art design media and then you'll see creative arts and Grade gorman and you've got all sorts of things on here and um, if you go to the news section you'll see events or you just look at, at click on news and you'll see what's going on so we've got information on our portfolio submission here and uh, also if we're holding any on-site open days, you'll find the information on, on, on that there as well. So uh, also you can have a look at our people. If you look at our academic staff, something that we're really proud of at the School of Creative Arts is all of our staff really are practicing artists and designers. So they're not just academics, they're people who are out there in the sector doing really, really uh, impressive work, uh, exhibiting very regularly and uh, they're very active in their sector. So as I said, you can go to Facebook as well, and we post most of the events on, on our on our Facebook page. 
Another thing for you to check, check out is our exhibition website, and that is DSCAX, and that stands for uh, Dublin School of Creative Arts Exhibition. Uh, every year we have about 120 students graduate from our school and we normally have a really uh, exciting exhibition which takes place in June. Uh, and hopefully we'll have one again this year. Last year was a little bit scaled down, but we actually still managed to have an exhibition. Um, and you can click on the work and you can click on students and you'll find you'll find um, uh, work from different students. Uh, and that gives you a really good idea of the type of, of, of work that our students produce. So I uh, it's, it's a really good place to, to um, start to find out a little bit more about our programmes. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's uh, just an image of our exhibition website. And just, uh, um, Kieran, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think our exhibition this year is opening on the 2nd of June, 2002, 2nd of June. So again, main thing is keep them in contact and you'll find out what's going on. And uh, I know, you know, it's, it's just a really good time to come up and visit us, regardless of what course you pick. You know, it's just a great time to come up and see the work of the students. If you have any questions at all about any of this stuff or about the exhibition, uh, we, uh, sorry, about the uh, portfolio submission exhibition or anything, you can contact creativearts at tudublin.ie and we will try and answer every every email that we get. The main reason I think uh, you're all here today is for our portfolio submissions. Um, it's been a very, very tough year uh, for a tough couple of years for you as students and, and applicants to programmes. Um, and we just want to let you know that we're very, very aware of that. And we will absolutely take that into account when we're marking your portfolio. We know it's been an extraordinary time um, and you've missed out on lots of things, but we just want to make you feel absolutely um, comfortable that when you're submitting, we will be taking really good care of it and looking after it and, you know, taking into account the situation that, that has happened over the last couple of years. Um, uh, do, do, do. We always take a very, very positive approach to our portfolio reviews. So we never try to exclude people. It's really not about that. What we all we want to do is make sure that you are coming into the school with the skills and abilities in order to be able to progress. And we, like I said, we adopt a very, very positive approach and you can be assured of that. Uh, there are times that, you know, when people maybe don't get in, but we would always encourage you to go back, try again, or actually even, you know, contact us and we can give you some feedback. So we will jump to some questions and if, uh, you don't have to take notes because most of these questions are available on the website and I can direct you towards, uh, there's a frequently asked question sheet uh, where you can get answers to all, all of this. Um, just to let you know, uh, the School of Media is where photography sits and a lot of these questions are going to be very, very similar. Uh, and if there's anything specific, uh, Tim, who is there from photography, can answer any photography specific questions. I'm going to mainly be doing uh, the it's the creative arts form again photography is very similar so we're not going to explain the difference but if there's anything at the end uh, uh, you can ask so how do i submit my portfolio we have an online uh, application system this year which we 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 instigated uh, following covid because it was very difficult to accept physical portfolios but what we found is it, it's actually really good because <clears throat> it helps students kind of um curate their work a bit, think about it. And actually also it saves them a lot of hassle in many respects in terms of traveling to Dublin and all of that sort of thing. So we found it actually works really well. Along with that, the slight downside is you don't get to drop in your portfolio, but we would love to see you visiting the campus and uh, we will have some open days, hopefully before June where you can actually visit. Um, so tudublin.slideroom.eu is, is our, um, uh, portfolio port, um, platform. Uh, what is the closing date for submitting my portfolio? The closing date is Monday 28th of February at uh, 5 p.m. Okay, so you need to get your portfolio in for then. Um, what type of work should I submit? Really what we want to see is um, 
typically about 25 pieces, uh, well, up to 25 pieces of work. We want to see your drawing ability, your practical ability and your conceptual ability. And we like to see like a range of things, finished things, sketchbooks, notebooks, development. And uh, I think this sums up what we want to see more than anything is we want to see that you have a, an inquiring mindset uh, and the ability to explore con concepts through your art and design work. So that's really, really important. This, this Your ability to acquire is not just about being brilliant at drawing. Not everyone is brilliant at drawing. It's about having that, that inquiring mindset. Uh, what programs require portfolio submission? You probably know this already, but visual communication, fine art, interior design, and visual mer merchandising and display design, and also, of course, photography. Um, on the portfolio application system, when you log in, and I'll work through that process in a couple of minutes, uh, lots of people will ask this one, uh, can I start my application now and save it um, and submit it later? Uh, yes, is the answer. So the only really important thing about that is once you submit it, it, it is actually really submitted. So you can't unsubmit it or not without a lot of hassle. So if you do submit it too early uh, and you know you can contact us and we can try and unsubmit it, but you are going to end up having to resubmit a lot of the stuff again. So really important. Um, uh, once you start your application, you can save it, but then you have to remember to go back to submit it because uh, once you, <laughs> if it's saved, we won't actually see it until you press submit. So that's really, really important. What type of files can I upload? So you can submit up to 25 pieces of work and they can be in different formats. So images, PDFs, videos, and you can also add in links to media from uh, YouTube and, video and Vimeo. So you can add in links if you want to, uh, we'll say scan uh, and uh, do, do a video of your sketchbook, you can actually do it on YouTube. Uh, that's if, 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 if your um, file maybe goes above that size, but these are pretty big sizes, so you should be able to upload them. What if my images or files are too big? So the file limit is really, it's more than adequate really, uh, however, there are ways to reduce your files and you just really all you have to do is Google it. But if you go to photoshop.adobe.com, there's a, a, a platform there for reducing your images. You don't have to have Photoshop. There's a, a system there for doing it. Um, and there are lots of other ways of, of doing it. You just have to kind of Google it. Uh, so really important because we're moving online and we're expecting you to photograph your work uh, and upload it. So it's a little bit tricky. So we put together just a couple of general guidelines so you can get an idea uh, for you know, how you're going to actually go about this to best represent your work. Uh, you can use a digital camera or a good phone camera. A good phone camera is perfectly adequate in most cases. Um, so you don't have to have a fancy digital camera. Uh, most important thing to do is take your time. Uh, another really important thing to do is ensure you have good light. So um, you could try bringing it outside, but if you're bringing it outside, you have to be as well a little bit careful about the sunlight and shadows and all that kind of thing. But it's often a, a good idea to bring it outside. Photographing it in a darkened bedroom is maybe not always the best thing to do. Try to get flat, even light across your work. So sometimes people photograph things and they might have glass in front of a, a painting or something, or they've got a shadow and that just makes it harder for us to judge the work. So try and get a flat, even light across the work. So often what works well is like a kind of cloudy day outside because you don't get the sun going in, going out a cloudy but bright day outside. Um, sometimes if you hang your work on a wall or a door, that can work because that way you don't get shadows from, uh, we'll say a light bulb if you're inside, so that can work. Uh, try to place your work against a, a clear background. That's maybe if you've got some sculptural pieces or, or generally even the, if it's, a, if it's a, 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 a painting or a drawing or a sketchbook. Try just not to have anything that uh, detracts from your work, basically. How can I show my sketchbooks and notebooks? So this is really important. Um, like I said before, we want to see really your kind of inquiring mindset and not just a lot of finished uh, beautiful image uh, paintings or drawings. 
we want to see your development work and um, we do want to see your sketches and notebooks and that can be a little bit tricky to convey. So one of the things we suggest doing is maybe doing a little video, uh, one minute or less. I mean, there's no really hard rules. You can go a bit longer, but try not to, you know, have 10 minute videos. Uh, you can generally flick through a notebook um, in, in, in one minute. And all, all we want you to do is you can do it on your hands. But the main important thing is that you maybe find a way to prop up your camera um, and, and that you, again, ensure you have good light and everything is steady. You could do a, a, a slideshow. There are different slideshow softwares that can convert it into a video or you can do it in a PDF. Again, a PDF has to be less than 10 megabytes for our system. But again, you can create the PDF and reduce the size. Uh, when you log on, you'll see that there's an opportunity to make an applicant statement. Um, that is completely optional. It's not something that we really mark. Um, well, it's not something that we mark. It doesn't uh, form part of our marking, but it can be an opportunity for you to say something about why you want to do the program, that you are a little bit about your background or whatever. So it's an opportunity for you to say something, but you really don't have to. You, it's not it's not compulsory at all. So your work and how will it be marked? We mark it on three categories. So evidence of your drawing ability. So we'd like to see examples of freehand, uh, observational drawing and technical drawing as well, even for uh, particularly with, say, for interiors, your ability to do drawings like that. We like to see use of color and texture, and we like to see a variety of subject and media. But really, we, we want to see just that you're interested in that you're not afraid to draw. Evidence of practical practical ability, uh, so skills in visualization, two and three D. So that can be making things. It can be making sculpture. Um, we want to see your ability to present something, and your ability to have kind of control over the media that you're using. So that's your kind of practical ability. And again, evidence of your conceptual ability. So we want to see an investigative kind of mindset. We want to see you generating ideas and taking different ideas and maybe narrowing down your ideas and taking one idea and, and moving in forward. We want to see imagination and we want to see creativity, obviously. And as I said, we want to see an inquiring mindset um, and the ability to explore concepts through your work. How will you get your results? So uh, we always have this question and it's really important. Your results will be sent uh, to the email address supplied um, on your CAO application. So it doesn't uh, go anyplace else. Uh, it doesn't go to the, if you submit a different email address to the slide room, you know, when you're uploading your portfolio, it goes through the CAO email. So that's just really important that you remember that. And that's the one that you check. If you do have any questions, you can email creativearts at tudum.ie and we will come back to you. Again, if you have a query, uh, you can uh, go to creativearts.tudum.ie and also that's our phone number. Emails typically better because our office is uh, very busy. Uh, Elaine, our school administrator, uh, gets very busy and gets a lot of calls, uh, especially at this time of year. I'm going to show you just a couple of screenshots and then we'll go into some questions. Uh, I won't spend long on these because, uh, as I said, you'll, you'll, you'll see it when you log on. Um, ignore this, it says 2021, but it's the exact same. The first thing you have to do is you have to sign up to Slide Room to get started. It's quite a short form. It's quite simple. Um, I, the one thing I would say is remember, it's probably easiest if you do use the same email address as you provided to the CAO. The other thing that's really important is that you use when you're putting on the uh, going into slide room is that you use your current CAO number. OK, if you have one from a previous year, just don't use it. Use your current one. That's just really, really important um, because it allows us to match you. Like we generally will probably find you by names, but it's, it's easiest if you have the same number. Uh, when you log on, you will see an applicant declaration, and that basically is you confirming that the work that you're about to submit is all your own. Uh, so it says, this is my work, it's not belonging to, to anyone else, and you're you're agreeing to that. Uh, you put in your CAO number, as, as I said, the current one, and you select the programs that you're interested in. You can select them all, it doesn't really matter, but make sure you select the ones that you're interested in. 
um, your date of birth. And just one thing to note is that is in the kind of American format. So it's month, date and year. OK. Then you've got the optional statement. And then you simply go to add media. So when you click on add media, you've got a box pops up and you can select the files from your computer. So you will figure this out. It'll be you'll be familiar with the process. Um, you can add a title. Yeah, you need to add a title and you can also add some additional details about the about the, the piece of work that you're uploading. So if there is something you want to say about it, feel free, free to use that box. And there is um, like a thousand characters. So that's more than more than enough. Um, just we said we I'll just show you some quick images of the types of thing that can work, you know, if you're uh, photographing and some of this, by the way, is very good. So don't be put off. Of course, I picked some of the best kind of submissions and things to, to show. So if you're photographing your um, sketchbooks, your workbooks, that kind of thing, really important, getting that natural light and putting against a nice clean background. Again, same for these. Um, you know, we expect these to be busy uh, and messy, and that's absolutely fine. So don't worry about that. But just do spend a little bit of time getting nice, nice kind of light. Uh, things can be sketchy uh, and see a mix of different types of abilities uh, in terms of how people are representing things and how people are drawing. So that's just a really interesting page. And again, a, a, this is a very advanced piece of work. So again, you can kind of ignore that. But what I was showing here is just a really a, um, a, a very good good way of photographing your actual work. So taking, getting it, maybe taking it outside, getting some really good light. And then once, uh, as I said, there's your warnings are here. You have to remember to submit your application uh, until you submit it. Unless if you don't submit it, um, uh, we won't actually see it. So you can upload it all, uh, all your work, but unless you pl uh, press submit, we won't actually see it. So it's really important that you do that. So that's kind of it from me. I know I've kind of ran through that very, very quickly. Um, so what I think we will do now is we might go through some of the questions and answers and try and answer as many as possible. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, when will you get your portfolio results? I think it, it usually takes a, a couple of weeks at least after uh, you submit. So allow up to a month, I think, pretty much. Uh, Karen, unless yeah, I think it's about Usually that. two to four weeks. Uh, just depending on the number of applications, but as quickly as possible is uh, the way we like to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Katie, for photography, must you include photos of scenes you've taken? Tim, do you want to have you? Can, can you see that question? Sure. Yep. Hang on. Uh, hi, Katie. Yes. If you're applying for the photography course, we want to see your photographs. And so in the same way as the fine art applications, uh, creative arts applications, we're looking for 20 to 25 different images, um, usually showing four or five different themes. If you want to kind of group your work into landscapes and portraits or maybe some other subject that you're interested in. So it is that uh, examples of your photography, which are most important, but we do like to see examples of people's general thinking and experimenting and other creativity. So if you want to include some examples of uh, drawing the sketches, any other kind of work, that's possible too. But we do look at the photographs first. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we have Martin. Martin, do you want to turn off your mic if you can do that and then uh, ask a question or, or type in whichever you prefer? Sorry, did you mean turn on my mic? Yeah, yeah, sorry, turn on. Sorry, mind. sorry, <laughs> yes. I meant that. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, uh, I, I just have a question just regarding the uh, main portfolio and the sketchbooks. Do you want the sketchbooks in a separate document or as part of the 25 images for the portfolio? Uh, so basically, you can upload 20, 25 files. So uh, if you want to be more efficient about it and you have lots of materials to upload if you uh, put all your sketchbooks into a, a, a video or into a pdf that counts as one so, okay great yeah, yeah. okay so right. yeah but uh, just, whichever you can also like 25 pieces of, of work is you know even individual sketches um 
it might be just about enough but yeah, yeah. all right so sorry to, just to clarify that so if i say took uh, you know 20 images of sketch sketchbooks i just put them into one pdf yeah that's fine that's absolutely yeah, that's fine. fine as long okay. as it's below the 10 megabytes that's all yeah magic all right thanks the two Two, two questions just came in there from interior design. Maybe I'll answer them. Sally, um, can I use the same portfolio for interiors and architecture? Absolutely. We have no problem with that. And Megan, if you're submitting a portfolio for your interior design, is there anything specific that we're looking for? Well, really just, as John said, really good evidence of drawing or technical drawing or whatever way you want to show your drawing skills, your practical ability, and your, then your ability to conceptualize, because each one of those is worth 200 points. Okay. Ronan, did you want to say something there? Are you? I was just going to follow up on the, the previous uh, question around sketchbooks, just to sort of emphasize that a really efficient way to capture the notebook in a single document is to, vid is to set up your camera phone and video yourself turning the pages. Um, and what we can then do on our side is we just pause the video where we want to stop and take a closer look and it's really accessible and it might be more it might be easier for you than trying to collate a whole bunch of uh, stills into a pdf or into a document it, it works really well okay thanks brian thank you okay so uh anything specific you need for interior design portfolio sorry now you might have answered that already did you Yeah, mute again. Yeah, he did. He did, John. Yeah, he did. Sorry, he did. I yeah, think, yeah. Uh, the next question is Sophie Monahan. Uh, typical pieces for a visual merchandising portfolio. Kerry. Hi. Um, the same as 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 is required for the other programs, you know, evidence of sketching. If you've done any 3D work, we really like to see that. So photograph that and put some of those 3D uh, photographs in as well. So it's really good to see. So uh, yes, yeah, sketching and 3D work for us would be fantastic. Okay, sorry, I've got a couple here. I don't think we answered them. Uh, do you need to list the materials used on each piece? Um, no is the answer to that. You, do, you don't need to do it. You can feel free to add it in the box if you like, but you don't certainly don't need to. Well, um, it can be helpful to identify the medium, like if something is made out of plaster or if something is painted in acrylics or oils, it can be uh useful to to list the materials that it's made from or the size it's not apparent like if something's really big or really small you can put in the dimensions that's a good idea um sorry my portfolio has a theme but i also have some general non-thematic work i would like to submit would that deduct uh points well i'm going to say no but uh, if anyone wants to elaborate <laughs> Um, no, I don't think so. No, no. So uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I can rep reply to that. I think it does no, you won't be deducted points for it. But I do think it's a good idea to not to have too many teams. It's it's always a better idea to concentrate on a few teams and, and develop them um, conceptually and also through your kind of inquiry than having too many too many teams. It's, it's a good idea to consolidate that. So um, less is more sometimes. Yeah. Can I just um, can I just pick up on what Mick is saying there in terms of selection and editing? is to don't forget to select your strongest work and um, rep, that will represent you in the best way rather than putting in everything. Um, select what you think is strongest and focus on that. So that would be a, another tip. Absolutely, I think that's a good point. What we're interested in as well is your ability to judge your own work and to curate and to be kind of knowledgeable and on top of, you know, your we, well, what's good and what you 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 feel you've actually done, you know, to be aware of that. So I think that's actually important to be able to kind of curate your your own work a little bit. Um, if I'm uploading a video, should there be any audio? Uh, answer is it it there can be, but it's not necessary. You don't need to do any kind of a commentary. Um, in fact, yeah, it's probably not, not necessary at all. Is that twenty five a limit? So twenty five is a limit of the number of files that you can upload. Yeah. Uh, however, like we said, if if it's a, a sketchbook, you can have multiple pages which can be shown in a PDF or in videos. Uh, what type of work, this one is for Tim, should you include in a photography sketchbook? 
The I typed a short piece after that, and it's that we'd love to see the creative process. So if you have a sketchbook where you're working out ideas and then go on to make photographs of those ideas, you can do your video of a sketchbook, and then we see how those are represented in photographs in the other part of your portfolio. Uh, my sketches are terrible and lots of stick figures, but you can generally make a connection between them and my photographs. Okay, Actually, we have uh, how many points is a pass for a portfolio? Uh, John, it's uh, 200. 200 is a pass, yeah. uh, but you would typically want to be getting a little bit more than that. Yeah. Uh, so. Sorry, John, while we still, while Tim is talking photography, Katie asked a question earlier, and I don't know if we, she asked two questions. And one was whether you need to be familiar with photography to submit the portfolio. Do you mean, Katie, there, like, do you have to have a kind of technical knowledge of photography? And if so, I'd imagine, Tim, our answer would be no. We can teach you <laughs> the technical. It's really about, um, looking through the frame and what are you capturing in the frame and then are you turning and looking from another angle are you moving around what way are you moving around an object to get different views of it that sort of thing would it be tim really that we're looking for more so than the technical abilities that's why we talk about you know 20 25 pictures on four or five themes because that shows you looking at a certain subject from different perspectives at different times going back to that idea and how can you come up with different types of images that work with that theme so in terms of using cameras i can teach anybody to use a camera but you're bringing your creativity you're bringing your personal vision so that's a good thing to show and we can see that in images if you even if you don't feel like you are great at handling a camera okay Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Nora. Uh, Sarah asks, is 3D work necessary for fine art? I think I've, I put an answer in the, okay. the chat there, but but it, no, it's not necessary. It, but if you do have something um, uh, and it's related to perhaps a team you're exploring, then certainly include it. And it, sometimes it is a good idea, as Rona mentioned, um, especially with, with, say, any kind of sculptural objects to include maybe the material you used. Um, but no, it's, it's not necessary for this submission. OK. Uh, and I'll I'll, I think some of these might have been answered, but I'll read them through because they might be uh, they they might be helpful for other people too, and they mightn't be uh, spotting it in the chat. Do drawings for interior design have to be something to do with furniture drawings or anything? And the answer no. would be no. Um, look, you can you can leave it open. It can it can be anything from uh, loose SketchUp uh, drawings that you've done, technical drawings hand drawings of an interior or of a piece of furniture we don't mind yeah uh, is it okay not to annotate your work or would you prefer pieces to be annotated so i i think well in in relation to this when you upload an image uh, like i said there's that ability to call i think you have to call each uh, thing you upload you have to call it something and there's a box where you can explain it and annotate it if you like if you mean annotating on the actual thing really it depends on what it is so if it's a sketchbook sometimes it's useful useful to have notes and annotation um really it's up to you you don't have to be going annotating absolutely everything just just if, if it helps explain what what you're showing unless anyone else has anything to add to that yeah uh, keep it simple keep it simple good advice yeah uh for each piece do we have to reference how it connects to our main themes um well, somebody from Fine Art want to mention, discuss that, or can have a go at it? Um, is it necessary? I think I think you can. In, in that sort of stuff can be in your can often be evidenced in your notebooks and sketchbooks and maybe worksheets and preparatory work, etc., like that. So I think that if it's if it's there, then you don't need to add another layer of explanation. But just remember that this is the first time we will have seen your work. You might be familiar with it, but we've never seen it before. So if context helps connect things, um, you can do that. But it, it, just think about it from the point of view of somebody looking at it for the first time. Um, that would be my sense of it. OK, so uh, Megan, sorry, this one might be answered already. For the portfolio for interior design, would you uh, have to add 
pieces uh, where you create a room space. Did we answer that one, Neville? You did. Uh, no, we didn't. Um, no, you don't have to, but we would love to see you do it. That would be great. So please, yeah, go, go for it. And another one for you, Neville. Can you use pictures of pieces created using CAD or SolidWorks uh, that are part of the yes. conceptual design? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We would love to see as much of your skills in using computers to generate orthographic drawings, perspective drawings, plans and sections. OK, another one. Are you more interested in technically impressive final works or good exploration of ideas, even if they haven't led to the best work? I'd say both, basically. I would say both, but we're, we're interested certainly in the exploration, unless yeah. anyone else has anything. Correct. Exploration. And also yeah, your exploration, own... Yeah. Also, I would say your own personality, what you're into. Um, it's not about te technical per perfection as much as also, you know, showing your own interests and your own creativity and your own things. So, you know, uh, that would be part of that exploration of ideas, perhaps. OK, do you need to have 3D pieces for interior design? Maybe that was answered already. No, you don't need to have 3D, but we would love to see a 3D model showing how you'd use the space, what's in it and record it, you know, photograph it. Um, we'd love to see that as well in your portfolio. Uh, Justine asks, can you run through product design? I think uh, Justina, product design doesn't require a portfolio. Um, so uh, not not uh, to you, Dublin. So you that's direct entry to the CAO. Um, uh, I won't get into product design in detail here, uh, but if you have any questions, you can email Creative Arts and uh, Link and forward it on to me, and I'd be more than happy to answer. By 3D art, say for visual, say for say visual merchandising, do you mean drawing pieces in a 3D style or physical art? Um, uh, well, I guess when we say we we could mean either. Like we would like to see your ability to. Kind of draw in three dimensions and to be able to you know not just draw in two dimensions but um we also like to see your ability to make things so especially i would say for visual merchandising um it's great to see people with a hands-on kind of capability of making unless Kay, uh, kerry wants to add anything to that no, that's that's I mean what i meant by 3d was that you know because we do a lot of prop making if they if if they have done any prop making or made any 3D pieces at home, it would be really good to see them. If they haven't, it's not an issue. So we're also just as happy to see two dimensional drawings. So that's what, you know, it's just if they have them, great. If they don't, it's not a problem. OK, and somebody asked, what do you mean by technical drawings? By that we mean drawings that you might uh, have done, uh, I suppose, that show you have some ability, particularly with, say, for interior design or something like that. Um, your ability to do uh, like uh, technical drawings from um, technology or uh, uh, that you might do in school. So plans, elevations, that kind of thing. Isometric. Isometric, that's per perspective. Uh, we love isometric. We love isometric. <laughs> uh, yeah. do, does everything have to link to a theme or can there be random sketches? I would say yes, there can be random sketches, but uh, if the portfolio is full of entirely random sketches, uh, that's not necessarily a good thing either. We do like to see you working through a concept, but that doesn't mean that there can't be pages where you, you know, that have to be finished or uh, can be individual sketches on their own, I guess. Um, but we would like you to see you dealing with concepts and working something through rather than just a selection of random sketches. Um, Unless anyone else wants to add to that. Uh, just remember to edit the strongest work. Can a portfolio be up uploaded on PowerPoint? Uh, I'm not actually sure if it accepts PowerPoint, but from PowerPoint you can save as a PDF. So that was that is what we would really recommend you do. Uh, so in PowerPoint, you just say save as PDF or print as PDF, um, and then that's that's the best thing to do. If I were to 3D print a CAD drawing uh, I had done, could I use an image of it? You could. Uh, I, uh, I would say it's not entirely necessary to do that, but you could actually do it. And there's certainly no problem with doing something like that. It shows some uh, your technical ability. Yeah. 
Uh, do you need to have life drawing in your portfolio? Uh, it's always good to see. I would say, does somebody from uh, else wants, want to answer that? Um, it's not it's not necessary if you don't have access to a life model or you haven't done life drawing. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. But if you do have life drawing and it's strong and it does show your like within that drawing category, um, it can speak to that, then include it. OK, uh, any advice for mature students? That's a very open question. Um, we're we have lots of mature students. That's an important thing to say. And uh, we would encourage you to to apply, certainly. Uh, it, and the same question, is it just the portfolio points that are counted or portfolio combined with CAO points? Uh, Duncan, it is generally uh, a combination of both. Uh, it depends a little bit. Um, I don't know, Gareth, do you, are you still there, Gareth? If you want to come in there, there's advanced entry. I'm not sure if, if, um, if it's an advanced entry question or not, Duncan. So maybe the best thing to do is if you have any questions, if you email admissions at tudum.ie or uh, creativearts at tudum.ie and we can advise you specifically on, on your case. Uh, what would be a good PLC course that would link into interior design? Neville, we, we like, I mean, there are lots of good courses out there, but I know there are some that we yeah. uh, regularly take. Yeah, well, we really, really, we, we were really, we have a really good connection with Colosta Dulig. Um, they're really fantastic. Senior College Black Rock is also excellent. Um, so um, they're they're fantastic um, at just kind of feeding in and linking into to what our students do. And also um, there's a possibility for advanced entry if you do a year or two with them. OK, and what are you looking for in a portfolio for uh, visual communication? Uh, I can maybe answer that. We, we judge all the portfolios on really on the same same kind of criteria. So we want to see your drawing ability, your creative ability. Really, it is the same. But I suppose if you have skills, abilities that are specific to interior, uh, sorry, to Viscom. So if you've done things like Illustrator, if you've done any visual communication, any graphics, any website, it's great to see those. But there is not necessary that you've done that. Uh, we like to see drawing ability, you know, your ability to uh, I suppose, create nice graphic forms, you know, that kind of thing. And I think we are nearly there. So I suppose, uh, oh, one more. Um, I'll tell you what, we, after this one, we will we will, we'll kind of draw a line under it. And what you can always do is email creativearts at tudum.ie. Is it OK to upload development sheets alongside pieces of fine art? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It's actually, yes. Important, it's actually important to do that. Yeah. OK, so we might answer a couple more in the in the chat. Um, are you linked to Liberty College for interior design? We're not necessarily linked, but we have students will apply from Liberty College. For, John, absolutely. John, can I yeah, just, have, can I come in on that? Student from oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just, just in terms of PLC courses, I'd advise anyone you check them out at their end of year show. You we, we like standards can vary from year to year. We can't guarantee that a college we recommend could be good uh, in the following year. So it's always a good idea to go to there. They always put on an end of year show. They do open days just in the same way we're doing it now. That's what I would advise and make your mind up that way. Just in the same way as I'd ask all of you to come to our end of year show on the 2nd of June and you can see the kind of work that's produced in the school. But for interior designs, Kieran, it's just worth saying that we've had a lot of students come through oh, yeah, from absolutely. Liberty. From Colosh to do like in senior college Black Rock. So yeah, yeah, just yeah. just kind of just emphasize that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So look, uh, we would like to say a huge thank you uh, for coming along. And we really uh, hope we actually see you physically. Uh, I know it's kind of um uh, strange not being actually physically able to see you. So we'd love if you can keep an eye on our Facebook and on our website. And hopefully um we will also have your emails address email addresses from this. So we'll let you know if we have any opening days. And again, let me just reiterate, like talk to you if you're on a PLC course or in a secondary school, wherever you are, if you are interested uh, in visiting, we'd be more than happy to facilitate something. So you can contact creative arts at uw.ie and uh, we can we can arrange something. Um, yep, so unless anyone else has anything to add.
Okay, so thanks everyone, and hopefully we will see lots of you in uh, in September and get to meet you properly.